this thing on. You out there? Ah, that's hurting my ears. Don't do that. Hey, are you watching? I am. Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Hey, hey. you know what? What? I want a beer. Oh, oh, boy. I know it's early, but I want Mexican food and a draft beer. Ooh, a chimichanga. I would kill for a chimichanga right now. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait right here. You go get it. Okay. Okay. All right. But don't get Budweiser. Uh-oh. You know what? The kids today, they don't like the Budweiser. We'll tell you more on the very next Men Are So Smart. Thanks for watching Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Apparently, even the dilly dilly, dilly 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 phenomenon isn't enough to entice young Americans to pick up a Budweiser. Bud. Mm. On Thursday, Anheuser Busch in Bev, the beer giant that makes both Bud and Bud Light, announced that revenues in the United States dropped by 3.1% in the second quarter as its two main brands continued to lose market share. Yeah, beer is being hit hard by millennials right now and their shift in drinking habits as they increasingly opt for wine and spirits. Hmm. As a result, beer lost 10% of its market share to wine and hard liquor from 2006 to 2016. Ten years, okay. Uh, beer penetration fell 1% point in the U.S. market from 2016 to 2017, while both wine and spirits were unmoved. It looks as if this trend could be further exacerbated with the next generation of drinkers. A recent report from Bernberg Research found that members of Generation Z also favor more premium drinks such as spirits and wine over beer, and they're already drinking less than their predecessors. Yeah, in response to this, Anheuser-Busch uh, has been rolling out new flavors of lighter and premium beers such as Michelob Ultra Pure Gold, Bud Light Orange, and Budweiser Reserve Series. These beers saw more growth during its the most recent quarter. Have you seen the commercials for that Budweiser Red Beer? No. Yeah, who in the world would want that? Mm. I don't know. There's some people that put beer in tomato juice. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't know. Uh, for a hangover cure or something. Yeah. All right, so let's see. During an earnings call on Thursday week last, the company announced that it would be creating a new executive role to head up its non-alcoholic beverages business and accelerate growth. Lucas Hervasici, currently Global Marketing Vice President of Strategic Functions, will become the company's chief non-alcoholic beverages officer. Does that mean he can't drink? I think or so. Or he can't be an alcoholic? <laughs> so the non-alcoholic sector of uh, Anheuser-Busch currently accounts for more than 10% of its volume uh, and plans to grow 20% by 2025. Uh, Household Name is the new podcast about brands you know, the stories you don't. Uh, okay, uh, I'll tell you what. I have never been a fan of the Budweiser. And Ronnie, I know I say this every episode, but I want you to just today speak as a guy who's had a few beers in the past. I know you don't drink many of them now. Um, was Budweiser ever one of your choices? You know what? I basically drank what was ever at the party. And typically, it was either Coors or Bud. Well, that's not necessarily true, because when we were in our band back in the day, we used to drink Burgermeister. <laughs> yeah. And what was the other one? Um, you know... It had the puzzles underneath the caps. Oh, 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 Henry. Uh, no, no, not Henry's. Uh, gosh darn it. Oh, shoot. What the heck was it called? Was it, was it Lucky Lager? Lucky. Less. Lucky, Lucky Lager, yes. yeah. That's some top class, top shelf stuff right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we did. And then back then, I remember one time we played the quad area of the high school yep. with our band. Yep. And we had a bunch of beer that we snuck on campus and kept behind our equipment. Like we wouldn't get caught. We've got the beer. Right Miller back here, here, right back yeah. here. Yeah, you yeah. remember that. And it was Miller. And you know, to this day, I'm a huge Miller fan. 
And if I'm not mistaken, and please don't send me letters, I'm tired of misquotes. I believe that Miller Genuine is now an Anheuser-Busch affiliate, if I I'm not mistaken. I think they've probably absorbed several uh, different companies, but you know what I see now, when you go to a restaurant and you hear somebody order a beer, they never order a beer, or a Bud, or a Michelob, it is some IPA, yeah, or a, something different. I just don't hear any of the brands. I mean, Henry Weinhardt used to be big, and Michelob used to be like our luxury beer back sure. in the day. Uh, I never hear people ordering those beers at restaurants. Yeah, no, I don't either. I I think uh, I think Anheuser Busch may have to kind of. Rethink their market. I think that's what they're in fact doing. Really, is I mean that whole dilly dilly thing was a uh, an attempt, albeit a poor attempt, to uh, <laughs> it's recruit amazing, some younger Gen Zs and <laughs> the pit of despair. I <laughs> I liked it. I think I first saw that during Super Bowl. Yeah, and it was it was amusing. Yeah. Um, but you know, man, I think Budweiser had used to have some of the greatest commercials ever. Remember the three. Frogs that sure you know blood why sure thank you very much we'll be here all week <laughs> and then did they also was a Budweiser that had the was ah oh yeah yeah I'm pretty sure it was uh, I mean those are those and are what about their commercials. Super Bowl commercials and their Christmas commercials with the Clydesdale horses oh god oh some of those make me cry. Yeah, I know. I got to be honest. Well, no, I'm a man. I don't cry. Oh boy, I forget all that up. honesty thing. I cheer up. Yeah, I know you do. The animals. You're a softy. I love. I know animals. you do. All right, that'll bring us to the conclusion of a rather short episode. Budweiser, gonna be hitting the bricks. No, I'm sure they're fine. They'll do okay. I think they're okay. Yeah, their uh, stockholders are are gonna survive this. They'll figure it out. I hope so. You know, maybe they should work on energy drinks. <sighs> Not a big fan either. Oh, really? Yeah, do you drink them? If I go to the gym, I'll have uh, I have like a pre-workout drink that I use. What is that tur- terine, terine that they put in those things? I think my body is allergic to that stuff. Really? Yeah, I don't feel, I mean, you're supposed to feel, I don't know if better is the word, but more energetic. I feel terrible after oh. I drink one of those. And you know another thing? I'll tell you kids another thing. Vodka with Red Bull? <laughs> what the f? Yeah, I don't that get that. That sucks. Yeah, it's horrible. It tastes like cough medicine. Well, I think you've got two things that are on opposite ends. You've got one that makes you hyper, or one that does Chills not. Out. Yeah, so I'm not sure what the what the effect is you're going for there. But good luck to you yeah. people that are doing that though. Yeah. If you enjoy it, more power to you. That's yeah. all I can say. I, you do whatever you want. It's your life. Yeah. Well, do we care? No, we I don't, don't care. No, I don't care. Remember. I don't care. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> All right, that's going to wrap up today's episode. You know, I wanted to mention that we have several sponsors on our show that uh, help us out uh, to make these shows possible each and every week uh, and for the last 16 or 18 months, whatever it's been. And so we would really like to thank them. You'll see them at the end of this episode. And when you're in you know, need of goods or services, Please patronize our sponsors. We would really appreciate that. They do support the show. They support us as we do them. And also, if you're interested in advertising in the show, please send me or Ronnie an email. Our email addresses are, watch what, how we do this so professionally, lou at menaresosmart.com. And ronnie at menaresosmart.com. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. See you next time.